welcome back. Um, we're starting our art club um, on February, <laughs> instead of January. Um, and so yeah, Luce today is gonna show us her package. Um, how do you call it? Become both buddies? Yeah. Um, and so uh, Luisa and I met yesterday uh, and we, there's a couple um, um, of problems that we're gonna try to solve. Um, and so Luisa is sharing her screen um, and you can see there on, on the background the, the Google spreadsheet that has a link to a Google Doc. Um, yeah. You wanna take it over? Sure. Um, yeah, so I started making this package because I was getting a collection of functions that I was using to do the deconvolution step in one of our, um, I guess, analysis. And um, then Josh and Eric were going to use my functions in another study. And we were also going to do, do like a benchmarking study for deconvolution. So all of a sudden, it kind of made sense to keep them all centralized. So I kind of adapted like a couple big um, functions that I had saved just as R scripts, like in a directory. Um, so I started making them into a package. And um, so I've uh, encountered a couple road bumps along the way. Um, but I would say that like the main functions that I've created are the two for kind of create like getting statistics about um, our, like our getting different ways of finding marker genes. So there's our get mean ratio, which I have two different versions of, and then um, a find one that uses the find markers. Um, it kind of adapts this the find markers function from the scran package, but to be more friendly with our data. Um, so kind of an easier way to use that function. Um, and then I have a function that like preps some of this data and plots it in a specific way. So those are like the main functions that I've developed so far. Um, cool. And I've been using the BIOS see this package and the use this package, but um, I definitely one of my concerns is that like the my documentation with like the read means is not correct. So Cool. So yeah, um, if you could just open on the Google Doc. Um, so there you have, um, like I, I put there some of the uh, commands for installing the packages that you need to then develop packages. So that would be use these dev tools, test that. Um, and in this particular package, uh, the Combo Buddies, uh, Luis is using a lot of the Tidyverse packages. Um, and there's also some bioconductor packages such as Skater and single cell experiment. And I believe you were going to use Jaffe Lab. Um, 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 but it might be correct. Yeah, I think I'm using the the, the string split, um, like the SS function from Jaffe Lab in a couple places. Um, so today, like, I mean, we're just sharing her screen, right? Um, but if you wanted to try out the, some of these things yourself, um, you could um, uh, fork her repository and clone it. So forking means copying it into your GitHub account. Um, and then cloning means downloading it into your computer. Or you can simply download it into your computer if you want to practice. Um, um, Going out my door, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, um, I don't know if you want to if anyone is, uh, wants to do that. Um, otherwise, we can just follow along on uh, uh, Louise's computer. Um, and so there's a, a set of five different problems that we're going to work on. Um, and um, so this is the first time that Louise is making an R package from scratch. Um, and she, she's encountering a couple of, um, of, of steps that you need to do when you're making a package that maybe are not as well documented or, um, 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 but I think are uh, common enough that if you then decide to make your own R package, you might encounter some of these problems. And so it's, I think it's good to go through what the pro problems are and like we're gonna solve them during the session. So the first one is um, 
Luis is a fan of the tidyverse, and the tidyverse uses the pipe symbol a lot. The pipe symbol is that uh, you can see it on her screen on line 22 of her code. Um, it's the percent uh, greater than percent. So it's those three letters. Um, and so that actually is a function. Even though it doesn't have parentheses, that's actually an R function. Um, and so the code needs to know, the R package needs to know where that function is coming from. So, um, so Luis was like, oh, like, like, you know, I'm getting errors that like, what, like um, the pipe is not available, right? So you need, you were loading, I think, dplyr, is that right? Yeah. Right. Um, so um, maybe you can just put side aside the gold lock and, the, and your code. Um, so um, when I encounter errors like this about like, um, I'm trying to import something that um, you know, I'm not sure how to do or something like that. What I typically end up doing is I, I like looking at code from other people because uh, they might have the answer there. So in this particular scenario, um, if you can open that uh, link the, that is uh, scene strum command fun. Yeah. Um, so this is a package that I, uh, I think it's pretty well written by someone else and that I've looked at, I've looked at this code for other reasons. But you can see there, that's the line of code that you need to include in your R package for importing the pipe. So this pipe um, symbol uh, or function, even though it's used by the tidyverse very frequently, it actually comes from this other package call, called uh, MacReader. Um, and so that's a package that actually defines the function. So you would like need to add that line and then because you're now using another package and reporting from that on your console, you need to type use this colon colon um, uh, use underscore package. And then in parentheses, make reader, sorry, in quotes. Um, I always forget how many T's it has. Right? <laughs> so, at this point, um, if you then run DevTools document, DevTools column column document, um, so this is going to uh, process all of the Roxygen code. And you'll notice here, we're getting a couple of messages saying right into the namespace. And so on the right side of your files panel, if you go one level up from the R, R directory into your package directory, uh, if we click on the namespace there, a file, that adds line 13, which says it's importing from the package MacReader is importing the function um, percent greater than percent. And so at that point, we, we, we can solve this problem of importing the pipe symbol. And so now inside of Luis's code, um, R will know what the pipe actually means, right? It knows that it actually comes from that migrator package. Um, when we ran the uses use package migrator function that edited the description file. So you click on the description file on the bottom right. Um, that added on their imports, which, which is on line 20, that added the migrator package on line 27. Right? which I think you actually already had. Uh, so you were telling your package that you wanted to import MacReader, but you, ha you hadn't actually updated the namespace. So you need to do both things. Yeah, I think I had tried putting a similar, um, like I had tried to import it maybe in a couple of different ways that I'd seen on like, um, like Stack Overflow or something. And none of them seemed to really do it. Um, so Leah, I use the pipe in like a bunch of my functions. Do I have to put that uh, import um, line in each function that uses the pipe? Um, so that is really up to you. Um, you just need it on a single file. Okay. Because um, that will update the namespace. I, however, like to use, to copy paste all the imports for every single function. Um, because let's say later on, I want to delete a function. That way I can delete yeah. all the imports related to that function. Right? Okay. Um, 
Um, so I think that is the, the common like um, practice in um, like a lot of R packages. You'll see that people copy paste this line. So for example, in this command phone uh, package that we, that we have here on the right, you search for import from MyGreeter um, on that GitHub repository, you'll find that it's like in multiple lines. Um, so, um, uh, it, can you delete the 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 at symbol and the uh, and the pipe at the end? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can see it. It's he it has it in like line forty three, line ninety seven of different um, packages. This package is made by uh, Spencer. Um, Spencer. Uh, um, I guess his last name is Mister, um, but I forget. Um, so that's one way of doing it. You mentioned Stack Overflow, so you go back to the Google Doc. Um, the next link I had is like for like the R Studio community website, which is similar to Stack Overflow. It's a website where people ask questions related to R packages. And so here someone had asked that question. And so there's uh, people like were like trying to, um, eventually the answer is what we did, which is the import from. Um, and so like in this particular case, someone was trying to do it and they, they at some point, um, we, like one of the answers for them, they're like, oh, um, I don't think it's working. Um, um, and they're like, can you take, you know, can you guess what is happening? And then Edgar is like, oh, you actually removed this single little tick before the, after the pound sign. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you need that, you know, that full syntax. So some of these errors you might have them, you might experience them because of a, a little, um, you know, um, a little typo or something like that. So that's the first one. So if we go back to your Google Doc, um, the next item was like, where to create unit tests and where to organize the code for these tests. So um, 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 let me fix the typo that I see. Um, right. um, so this is, like if this is the first time you're making an R package, you're, you might be like, oh, like where should I put all these tests, right? And so it's a little bit, um, it might be a little bit confusing, but like, first of all, there's, there's one little script called test that dot R inside the directory tests. Um, so that little script, uh, here Luis has edited it, um, yeah. um, but um, um, the way it should be is, uh, let's open an example that I have there on, on the Google Doc. Um, the actual syntax of it is very simple. It's like load the test that package, then load your package itself. Um, and then after that, run the function test underscore check with the name of your package. So, um, um, so line six through 16 that Luis has they shouldn't be there. They should be somewhere else, and we'll find like where they should be. Uh, so I, uh, I don't know if you. <laughs> Wait, we can uh, create that first before I. Yeah, yeah. You you might want to comment it out instead okay. of just deleting it. So if allow uh, line six also. So that's the syntax of of this um, <clears throat> of this little script, and what is this actually doing? What, when you want to test your package, um, this will like load test that because that's a package that has all the utilities for testing. It's also going to load your package, which has all the functions that you want to test for. And then um, test underscore check is actually the, the master function from the test that package that will be like, okay, let's find all the different test files for this particular package called the combo buddies and let's run all the tests and like produce all the output. Um, and so what this does is this function test underscore check, it actually looks for R scripts inside of the test that directory. And inside of that, it looks for the test that directory, which we have here on the bottom right um, um, on your uh, R Studio window. Uh, so you could open the test that directory. Um, and so right now, Luis doesn't have any tests, right? Um, so let's go back to the Google Doc. Um, and so um, 
we need to create individual test files, test scripts here. And so um, you can name them any way you want, right? So under tests, does that, you can name any, you know, use whatever name you want. However, there are some advantages that you gain from using um, uh, script names for your tests that are very similar to the names that you use for your R function scripts. So um, which function here do you want to test, Luis? Um, we could do a uh, get mean ratio too. Okay, so let's create a file. Um, um, so actually you could create this with um, um, use this colon colon, uh, use underscore test. Um, and then in, we're gonna give it the name test dash, and then the exact same file name you have right now, which is get underscore mean underscore ratio to that R. Yeah. Um, and press enter. So this uh, function from uses is creating that uh, particular test file and it has a little test here, right? Um, and so at this point, we can go back to your test that dot R script and uh, copy up. Is that all the code you wanted for your test? The one you had in your test that dot R? Um, uh, this kind of tests uh, like a number of things, but um, this, like the first two lines um, deal with this, this function. Okay, so let's, you know, copy those. Um, um, and instead of having like expect equal two times two, uh, you can uh, uh, paste your lines there. Um, So, um, so if you were to run this test right now, uh, like you would like try to load that data um, and then run the function, uh, get mean ratio to, right? Um, we'll need to work more on this test, um, but this is kind of like the structure of where you would put your files. Um, and so I noticed, I mean, the loading the data part that uh, um, we actually have it as a separate bullet point. So we'll get back to that. <laughs> um, 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 and then um, we also have a bit more things about how to organize tests. So let's, um, let's put on pause your package for a little bit. And um, if you open on the Google doc, the next link, that is an example file that I have, an example test file. Um, so this test file is on the test directory, test that directory inside of that, and it has a name test dash and then the function name, which in this case was GHAR version. Um, and so here it has a couple of tests. Um, so I'm running my function GHAR version and I'm asking it like, do I get an equivalent response um, to my, my expected answers? So the expected answers here are like for the line number two, I'm expecting a 4.0. Uh, for line number four, I'm expecting a 3.12, so things like that. Uh, and so there's, there's a bit of a longer chapter on like how to write uh, tests and all of this and how to, how to structure them. Um, but the initial file structure is this one. Um, um, with, all, with this collection of R scripts. Um, um, and um, so now, now we have on our, on our test, uh, get mean ratio two. Um, actually, and I noticed that uh, use is actually added a test dash before it. So we need to rename the file. Um, um, uh, I forgot that it was going to add a test dash to the syntax of it. Um, 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 uh, if you click on the on the checkbox, then click on rename. Now you can rename it. Yeah. Um, cool. 
Um, so this is kind of the syntax of how you would organize your different tests. Um, um, we'll be able to construct it um, as we have a, a bit more structure later on. So we go back to the Google Doc. Um, um, I have a more complicated example there. So we open that link. This is for the recon tree package that has a ton of tests. So you'll see like every single like different function has its own test. Um, um, and so let's open, for example, um, test dash create underscore rc dot um, r. The one above that. And so here you can see like um, uh, at the beginning I set up some a cache, and then um, I'm gonna run a test call. Um, on line number nine, where I'm saying like, oh, I'm creating a, um, this object using a friendly user-friendly function. And inside of my test um, underscore test that, so that's lines nine, 10 to 19, I generate a data. Um, and then I generate it again using a different function on lines 20 to 25. And then at the end on line 27, I expect my two functions to give me the exact same result or equivalent results. And so this is, I'm showing this example because this is actually the type of um, test that Luis wants to create for her functions because she actually has two functions, one called get mean ratio and another one called get mean ratio two. Um, and so you could use this type of a structure um, and write your full test um, after the session, right? To, to have uh, to test you know, your big functions. Um, and, um, and this is particularly helpful in this scenario with, with uh, Luis and um, Josh and Eric, because Luis initially wrote the function get mean ratio, uh, and it works for her data, but it doesn't work for the larger data that uh, Josh and Eric are working on. And so Luis is having to change all the internal code of her function to try to support this um, larger data. And, uh, and it's good to have this um, automatic test to make sure that like whatever changes that you're introducing actually um, give you the same results, right? So this is like useful as a developer. Um, and so uh, there's actually this idea of test driven development, which is you write the tests first before you write your functions. Um, 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 so that's what I would recommend for Luis to do is to like finalize this test of the get mean ratio two uh, before like uh, uh, finishing the function. Um, um, so let's go back to the Google doc a bit. Um, and so the next thing um, on the item list was understanding what is what are the two readme files. So there's a readme.md file, which is markdown format and readme.rmd, which is a readme.r markdown format. And so the way this, um, the way this is set up, um, the r markdown file will actually generate the markdown file. So if you open the rmd version of it, um, line number two says, I'll put a GitHub document. So that would actually is going, that, a GitHub document in this particular case is actually a markdown file. Um, and so this is useful if you want to have on your readme, which is the description of your repository, if you want to have some example R code of what your package can do. And if you want to include the output of that, um, of that example without having to autumn, autumn, um, manually like uh, run it yourself and update it. So <clears throat> So this is a little bit, um, you have a comment on line number five, which is generated automatically that says that readme.md is generated from the readme.rmd. Um, and the comment here is maybe not that specific because it says, please edit that file. By that file, it means please edit the readme.rmd, <laughs> right? Um, um, so you should never really edit the .md file manually, just the .rmd. Now it's a little bit, this is a slightly different R markdown file than you would typically encounter because on an R markdown file, you have that big blue button in the middle of your R studio window that says knit, right? 
And that's typically the thing you would run. And actually, Luis has run it before. But this is not the way on for packages on uh, for generating that, that MD file. We actually use this other function, DevTools build readme. Um, and so that's part of the steps that I have under the core file script um, that you have a link there on GitHub. Um, and you actually have it already also in your, on your own package. Um, um, so like if you open the, the core files, um, um, like under dev, um, if you open core files, um, it's line number 35 for you. Right. Um, so what will this do? This will actually, DevTools will read me, is actually going to install your package on a temporary library in R, and then is going to uh, run the readme RMD and generate the readme.md file. Uh, so this can take a little bit, like depending on how big your example is. And so let's try running it. I'm not sure if um, we have any issues, other issues with your package right now. <laughs> I didn't put any real examples in the RMD. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is like the BioC yeah. uh, example, or like default example. So, yeah. um, is it installing a couple packages? <laughs> oh, it might break. I don't think the scuttle was installing on. Oh, um, yeah, I was having some issues. I was trying to build the little um, pseudobulk mm -hmm. method that. Um, Matt recommended uh, rather than like the so um so I was trying to build that but I was having issues installing that but I guess it was cool this time yeah um yeah um that that we we haven't prepared that one so I don't have an answer for that one yet um I have an idea though but like let's leave it for later <laughs> um anyway so can you open your readme.nd file uh, so now your readme.md, uh, we didn't open it before, but her readme.md showed something else before. And now it actually includes uh, the output. Um, um, so it has here some examples of how to install it, um, how to install your package. Then like line 45, it's like showing an example, our function call, which in this case is summary cars. But then lines 46 to 52 include the output of that. Um, um, and it, it, like, it actually made a little plot on that you have linked to in line 60. It made a little uh, image called uh, readme-pressure-1.png, right? Um, um, and that's because um, um, there was an example there of having a little plot, right? Um, now, something that is a bit um, complicated at times about this setup is that use this actually configures your GitHub repository in such a way that you cannot make a commit unless you actually modify both the readme.md and the readme.rmd. So if you modify only one of those two files, it doesn't let you make a commit uh, because it's like, oh, it, it, the idea is to try to remind you that if you edit your RMD, you actually need to then run that tools you'll read me to update your markdown file. Uh, so it's trying to uh, help you remember that. Although the error message is not telling you that. <laughs> your error message is gonna be like, hey, I can't do anything, uh, can't commit. Um, you can actually force that type of commit if you use the syntax that I have at the bottom there on, on the cool doc, which is git commit dash dash no dash ver verify. Um, and so you would need to do that manually on the terminal instead of using the git uh, window of our studio. So Luis also ran into this at some point. Um, and I run into it uh, frequently myself because I forget to update the markdown file. Um, 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 when sometimes I, I don't want to, maybe my example takes like a minute to run, right? <laughs> uh, uh, my, my example on the RMD, so like it might take like 30 seconds for our studio to install the package in my computer, then a minute for the example to run. And then sometimes I'm like, okay, I just made a tiny change. I don't actually need to update the readme MD file right now. Um, and so I won't run it. Um, another situation I have is like, um, maybe some of my code 
doesn't change in the readme, but the output does change. And so at that point, I might have uh, run DevTools build readme manually. I mean, I might have run it. And even though my mark, our markdown file didn't change, the MD file did change, right? And so at that point, I need to use this git commit no verify syntax because um, um, the output changed because of the other function changing, not because of the readme changing. Um, cool. So this, you can see all this, there's a lot of um, um, uh, I guess details or like workflow ways of working with these packages that are maybe not as well documented or they're a bit tricky to explain, right? <laughs> um, um, so the next one Luis has is we go back to testing. Um, and so um, um, the idea is like, how do you actually write tests, right? Um, so one way to help you write tests is to break up your functions into smaller functions. So this is having like more modular code. That's the idea of it. Because if you have simpler functions, your tests by uh, proxy will then also be simpler. You don't have to test all these complicated like setup, right? Um, and so for example, right now in the function get mean uh, ratio, right? You have, you generate a lot of things inside of it, right? Um, yeah. Um, 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 yeah, so like, I don't know how, like you have your, your function starts in line 21 and it ends like around like, what is it, like line a hundred or so? No, 76. 76. Okay. So it's not as bad, right? <laughs> um, um, it's not, a, I mean, it's, it's a long function, but maybe not as crazy long. Um, I've written some crazy long functions. <laughs> and so, um, Nowadays, Bioconductor rec recommends that your function should have less than 50 lines of code. So that's like one um, um, benchmark you can try to follow. Um, um, another thing though is in this particular function, get mean uh, ratio two, if you scroll up to line 39, I think. Yeah, 39. At some point here, Louise is defining a function inside of her function. You can see that function call there in line 39. Um, so this is a perfect candidate to take out all of that code and make it into its own little helper function. Um, um, and so uh, you might, you know, what I would do, what I recommend doing here is like copying all that code and pasting it further down uh, in the same R script file. Um, And so let's define like, um, let's define a function, let's call it like dot um, mean helper or something. You know, whatever name you want. And then night, yeah. Get means, cause that's what I'm doing here. I'm calculating all the means. Uh, um, and so now you can use uh, get means above. Um, um, Now this, your get means actually might need more arguments though, because um, um, uh, if, you, if you scroll further down to your function, get means, you're using like some objects there, right? Like, um, so you might have to then have more arguments for your get means function. Um, so instead of just X, right? It'll have to be like, um, you, you'll need to specify some more things. So you still need X, but you'll need more things after X. Um, you need X first, such that like that will be the first thing map passes to it. Um, but you'll need more things after it. Should I leave it as like literally, like literal X? Um, X was the cell type, like a- Yeah, you can leave it as X. You don't need to, okay. you don't need to rename it. I mean, it can be helpful to rename it sometimes, but um, yeah. Um, so all these things you'll need to add, but the idea of this is, um, I mean, this will take uh, Louise a bit longer to do all of this, but the idea of, 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 um, of having a helper function is then 
you can test specifically what this is doing, right? Um, without having to test the, the full context of the rest of the function, right? Um, and so the example I was telling Luis the other day was like, maybe your internal function transposes the data, right? And so then you can write a little test that has like a little matrix of um, you know, two by three, a small matrix, and you can transpose it. Um, 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 actually, Keenan also, uh, I, I'm just looking at the chat on Zoom. Uh, uh, KJ uh, uh, recommended another name here, generate ratio tables. Oh, or is that another function? I don't know. Anyway, um, um, uh, what I was trying to say is like, um, um, smaller functions are easier to test, right? Um, it might involve a little bit more typing, right? Because here Luis has to specify for the get means function, like all the different arguments that he needs, right? Um, 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 is that all the only arguments he needs? Um, Looks like it, right? Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's not that bad. It's just two arguments, I think, uh, beyond the, the main one. Um, um, so these can be helpful for, for testing the function, the code. Uh, and it also, um, if you're more modular with your code, it also allows you to reuse code across functions. So let's say that get underscore means is a function that Luis needs to use in more than one of her main functions. So then that way um, she'll be able to, to test that. Okay. I think Kim was right. <laughs> get ratio table is a better. Okay. Yeah, because that's what I'm doing there actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the, the map function from per that you're using there has a specific syntax for passing the other arguments. Um, so um, like one, one quick way would be to use um, after the comma, use tilde. No, no, not there. Uh, on line 39, after the comma, uh, use tilde. Um, and then say dot x comma and then uh, se comma se underscore se. That way you can pass the arguments. You don't need a comma after that because you don't have a third, you don't have a fourth argument. Uh, oh, still type call. Oh, yeah, you do, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That should put the potentially will work. Um, and now, now you can write a little test for get ratio underscore table. This is the idea it will take longer for, um, than this session to do it, but that's the idea of uh, breaking up your code into smaller tests. Um, if you know, your internal function is kind of big, you can actually save it as its own um, R file um, and then have its own like little test file for it too, right? Um, depends how um, like um, how organized <laughs> your package wants, you know, you want your package to be, right? Uh, um, um, but that is the idea here. Um, so we, if we go back to the Google Doc, I, I, Luis is feeling really tempted to finish <laughs> the test <laughs> right now. Um, um, the last thing we have here is uh, work with data. And so, <clears throat> Um, there are these two functions from the use this package. One of them is called use underscore data and the other one is use data raw. Um, so uh, if you open that little help link there, let's look at that help file for those functions. Um, and so here, what it says is like use underscore data is makes it easy to save your data in the correct format for your R package. And so this one, you, you wanna save data that you wanna be able to then use in your examples uh, maybe using your tests, things like that. Um, and um, um, so use data is a function you want to use for that. Use data underscore raw is a little function that was going to help you create a little R script uh, that's going to help you document um, that particular data set. Um, so um, 
I don't know if you've already used this, use data underscore raw uh, for your example SE data. No. Um, do you have the code where you generate the your example data somewhere? Or is that not part of your package yet? Uh, that is not part of my package. Okay. So um, um, so let's just try using use underscore data underscore raw. Um, and um, 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 and so what is the example file name? Um, uh, is it like test this? You, have, you use it on your test. Yeah, it's this SCE test R data. Uh, um, so let's call it like um, 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 SCE.test, for example, right? You can use the same name. Yeah. Uh, R data? You don't need to add the dot R, no. no. Yeah. Just press enter at that point. And so this creates the directory data underscore raw. Uh, data dash raw, sorry. And inside of it, it creates the, the file se dash test.r. And at the end there, it says like, uh, it's going to save the data using use these use data, right? Um, so ideally, you would put there the code for preparing the data. Um, um, in this particular case, can you just load the data? Uh, you already have it, I think. So, so uh, from your, um, you have that line of code on, I think, um, on your test script, test get mean ratio. Yeah. Oh, SE test, the third one. Mm -hmm. Normally, I mean, this is a bit like a bit, um, Circular because you're loading the data in the location where it's supposed to be safe. But <laughs> okay. But yeah, let's just let's load it. Um, oh. Um, can you use um, here colon colon here instead of just here? And I'll save it. Um, and so then it says like, oh, you want to document your data and it sends you a little link to how you can document data. Um, um, and so if you go back to the, I mean, you could open that link. Um, that's one option. Um, uh, if you go back to the Google doc, it's not the same link, this is a different link. Right. Um, Do we want to open this one? Um, yeah, sure. That will, um, that's part of this book um, on how to make our packages. And it explains how to like document the data and things like that. Um, so this is like a longer version. Um, I'll just tell you the shorter version for now. <laughs> the shorter version is if you go back to the Google Doc. Um, this is where, again, I'm going to rely on an example from a package that um, someone else has made. In this particular case, this is a package I made. Um, and so if you open this link here, the way you can document data, it's basically very similar to the way you document functions. So you write a, like a, a little R script. Um, so I, for example, here I'm documenting the, the data file genome data. So I created an R script called genome data dash data. Um, um, so in your case, I would recommend using uh, use this, use R, open parentheses, open quotes, then, um, um, se dot test dash data. Um, and it's lowercase r. Open then, parentheses, open quotes, uh, se dot test dash data, dash data. Dash data? Yeah. And uh, not that's um that's slash yeah cool. Um, and so in there, uh, you can for example copy paste what I have right now, <laughs> even though it's not exactly you know doesn't really match, um, you know your particular data you have. Um, 
you can paste it on your S uh, on your file that you have. Uh, so I noticed that this just calls it SCE.R. Uh, I guess it um, it took out the extension. It thought the dot oh. was an extension. So you'll you'll need to rename it, I guess. Okay. Um anyway, um, um like let's if you scroll up. So the first line has to be the title. Lines three to six, I would just um, replace it by saying description. And so that way you have, uh, you need the pound sign with a little um, tick at the beginning. Yeah. Um, can you add a space before the D? Because otherwise you might have some problems. Um, then you have the references part. And so there you can put references to other papers, things like that. Uh, you need to give it a name. So line 15 there, the name, I would say it's uh, se.test. Um, the, main, the main thing that differentiates this type of documentation from a function is the document type. We're saying, we're saying here that there's a data document type. Um, um, we also add keywords data sets on line 24. Um, so I will leave that. And then you can link to other functions in linking to two other functions in my particular package that uh, show that. And uh, so look, I think this example, you could say like it's linked to um, get mean ratio two, right? So you can put the name of your function there. Um, yeah. You need to delete the first uh, square bracket here. Um, and so then you, you can use this, um, this syntax inside of lines 18 to 20, 22, which is like a, it makes a little like bulleted list. You don't want a bulleted list of explaining what you have, right? You can just type text um, um, for the format in line 17. Right? Well, I would delete lines um, 18 to 23. Um, and then like uh, on line 17, I would say like it's, um, you know, you need to you know, add some text there. Okay. Um, but that's the idea of how you would uh, document your data file. Um, if you now run DevTools document, um, um, that will um, create a documentation file for your new data set, se.test. Um, and um, on your test file of test dash get mean ratio two dot R, um, you don't need to load se test. It's already, it will be automatically loaded when you load your package. Okay. So for example, you can try that right now by going to session on the very top, um, on the very, very, very top. Um, restart R. Um, now load your package with uh, DevTools load on score all. Um, and so this actually loads the data too the SE.test data. So you could like say like class, open parenthesis, SE.test. Right, and so the data is there. Sweet. Um, cool. So uh, I see a question from KJ on the chat, which I, sorry, I didn't notice it earlier, KJ. Um, the question is, is there a test repository for our packages that you can use prior to submission to an official R repository? Um, so um, that would be, I think the, in a, in a way, the answer for that is the BioCities package that I made that um, Louise is actually using for um, her work here. Um, and um, that will add a GitHub Actions uh, workflow that will run a lot of the tests that either CRAN or Bioconductor would run themselves before they would approve your package. So that way you can start to see um, 
what what else your package is missing based on the automatic test that CRAN or Biocon or Bioconductor run. Um, so it can help you prepare your package for submission. Um, um, and that's why I made this package live service, right? Um, but as you can see with Luis and, and become a buddies, there's a lot of other things, right, that go into making a package for the first time that are beyond writing our functions, right? And so I know a couple of you here are interested in, in making your own R packages, and you're gonna run into things like this, right? Into how to actually, where do you actually put the code? Where do you, where do you store it, right? Um, um, uh, Cool. And so we can, uh, just to end here, um, on the data directory, the difference between the se.test um, di file that Luis had made, which is se.test.rdata, and the one that the package, package is actually using is uh, uh, one easy to spot difference is the file extension. So the, the official extension for packages in this case is, or one of the two official extensions is that RDA. The other one is R data with capital R, capital D. Um, and then also the data is saved in such a way that it will be, it will work in more operating systems. Um, 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 so there's some slight differences there, in how the data is saved. Um, cool. So with that, let me stop the recording. Thank you, Luis, for everything. You're very welcome. <laughs>